Hello and welcome everybody. I am here with my good friend Cheryl Muir today and we are talking about how passionate we both are about podcasting. So what I thought we would start off with was um, sharing our screen for a webinar that we created. It's a, it's a free webinar and we thought we would just um, go through all of that with some of you today. I want to give my assistant Roxanne a moment to get this shared in our groups. So today we're going to talk about how to position your story to be a guest on a podcast. And Cheryl, before we get started, do you want to just share your share your experience with um, podcasting so far? Yeah, absolutely. Well, first of all, if, if you guys haven't met me before and don't know me, I'm Cheryl and I'm a media strategist for authors and I used to work in public relations in the corporate world. Now, Mary and I differ slightly in that I'm very introverted, actually. I'm sort of an extroverted introvert, but what I love about podcasts is that you can do them from your home. I usually record them from right here, actually, with my mic, just like Mary's mic. You can see at the top of her screen there. I pop it on one of the sofas here and pad it with cushions and do the podcast from home, which is what I did the other day when I was on a podcast about writing. So that's what I really love about podcasts. It's the introvert factor for me. I'm going to be really honest. You can reach, Mary always says, from one, instead of one to one, it's one to many, but you can reach many people from your home office, home base, wherever it is. And I really love that, that you don't have to necessarily do the traditional book tour if you don't choose to. You can choose to promote your book and your beautiful work from your home, which is really amazing. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. So let's go ahead and get started talking about what we're going to teach people on podcasts today. So I thought I would share this slideshow with you guys. It's all about how to position your story to be a guest on podcasts. So my name is Mary Shores, and I've spent my entire career as an author, speaker, and an entrepreneur really generating solutions for people who are freaking out. And I've done this with an understanding of psychology, neurology, and neurochemistry. And as we know, this is Cheryl, and Cheryl is a media strategist based in the UK. She's a former public relations executive, and actually she has just completed her first book proposal on Twin Flames and turned that into Hay House. So we are anxiously awaiting answers on that one. Fingers crossed. Right. Fingers crossed and big prayers going out for that one. All Thank right. You. So tell me, I'm wondering, and you can let us know in the comments, have you ever appeared on a radio show or a podcast? If you have, I want to hear from you. And I'm also wondering if you have already appeared on a radio show or a podcast, are you ready to do more? Cheryl, you've appeared on some. Are you ready to do more? I am. I love podcasts. I've got my mics now. I've got all my kit. You don't necessarily need all the kit when you start out. But now that I have my Yeti microphone, I'm ready to do podcasts all the time. I'm really, really enjoying it genuinely. That's pretty awesome. So, and it's funny because with Cheryl, when she first started out, she was a little hesitant with the podcast thing, like she said, because of being an introvert. So mm -hmm. she, I, I was excited that she converted. So let's see, I've got a very sensitive um, little mouse here. So promoting yourself on a podcast is perfect for anyone who is a writer, a storyteller. You know, there's lots of people who are coaches right now. There are people who have other podcasts. They've got their own show. We also have, it's perfect for anyone who's an entrepreneur, a light worker, a healer of a certain modality, because like Cheryl was saying, it's a great opportunity to get your message out. And instead of doing that on a one-to-one -one basis, you're, you're really going to be able to do it one to many. And that's what makes it the most exciting. All right. You are in the right place if you're trying to build a platform and you want to reach more potential fans. You want to establish yourself as an expert in your field. Cheryl, do you want to say anything else about that? With relation to podcasts and positioning yourself as the expert? Sure. Well, anything on this slide? Yeah, absolutely. So what's really popular at the moment is this quote unquote chatty content. 
And what's really great about podcasts is that people listen to you and feel like they know you and they don't feel like they're being sold to or they're listening to someone's sales pitch or anything too formal or formulaic. It's this really natural content is very, very easy to listen to. And so that helps to position you as the expert because you're showing your expertise and explaining what you know but in a really, really relaxed setting. Yeah. And then do you, you know, what I notice too, is that whenever I appear on a podcast, especially if it's a show that has quite an established audience, is that I get an immediate jump in my book sales. Mm -hmm. And I also get an immediate jump in the amount of people who follow me on any given platform. So whether that be Instagram, whether it be LinkedIn, whether it be Twitter, definitely people seek you out if they heard you on a podcast mm -hmm. and they resonated with you. So podcasts are actually skyrocketing in numbers. Um, the last I checked, which actually I do have some updated stats on that that a friend of mine just sent me. So at, when I was doing researching this particular, putting together this particular webinar, it was at 67 million monthly listeners and 43 million weekly listeners. Now here's the amazing thing. Um, a friend of mine sent me some information just last night that actually, and this is, this information is less than three months old, and now it is actually at 73 million monthly listeners. There are currently over 500,000 active podcasts. That's a half a million podcasts. That mm -hmm. means that there's a half a million shows that you could potentially find yourself on. Um, podcast interviews convert 25 times better than a blog. And I think that the reason for that is, is because people can hear your voice, they can hear you tell your story, and you know, they're gonna be able to decide right away whether they resonate with that. I mean, if, you, if you're sharing something particularly personal, it just comes across different from your own voice rather than just written on paper. 85% um, of the listeners from a podcast actually listen to the whole episode. And I know that that's true for me. So if I'm listening to a podcast, even if I have to stop for whatever reason, I'll typically go back when I have time and finish out the podcast. And let's see. It says traffic from podcast interviews converts at 25 to 50% visitor to lead and 45% of monthly podcast listeners have a household income of 75,000 or more. It seems like every time I move these slides, they're going in the wrong direction. Um, <laughs> so I was gonna share with you my own dream story come true. So what happened with me was that for 10 years, I really, really wanted to write a book. And I would actually go around and say to anybody who would listen, I want to write a book, but I'm not a writer. And the thing is that words are very interesting and words are like a mirror to your subconscious programming. So when you hear me say the words, I want to write a book, it's like you can see that written on my soul that I've come into this life with this purpose of wanting to write this book. But I definitely have a big problem if the next words out of my mouth are, but I'm not a writer, because that's showing me that my words and my dreams are actually out of alignment with each other. But the moment that I invested in myself to make my dream come true, I was able to secure a book deal with Hay House Publishing within seven months. So here's a picture of me. It's just a selfie of my very first visit when I've gone to Hay House Publishing. I've been there a couple times now. Now, and it's just always a dream whenever I get to visit there. So, um, Cheryl, do you have anything to add to that? Um, yeah, the, the piece about I want to write a book, but I'm not a writer. We hear those kinds of things all the time and it becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy. So it might be, I want to write a book and I know I'm a writer, but I don't know where to start. Or I know I need to, to build a platform and I don't know how to do that. And we disqualify ourselves before we've even started the race. So the, the key is to get started and hopefully by the end of today, people are going to really understand that with the platform building piece, podcasts are absolutely key. And those stats that you shared, Mary, were so compelling. Um, the fact that they have, the monthly listens have gone up, increased by 6 million in the three months between the first set of stats and the second is, is huge. 
And it's also worth noting too that the personal development industry is growing. It's growing by 5.6% year on year between uh, 2000 and yeah, 2012 and 2022. So it's an $11 billion industry in the US alone. And it's really, really important people understand not only is it a, an industry and it's a business and we should look at it from that perspective, but it's an industry that's growing as well. So podcasts are growing, the personal development industry is growing. So the time is now. That is fascinating. Thank you for sharing that. I had no idea that the personal development industry was growing that fast. I think because I've just always been so, you know, it's always been such a part of my life that um, I, did, I just didn't realize there was that much growth. So I think that I thought what would be great today for anyone who's, for anyone who's interested in perhaps sharing their story on a podcast, I thought Cheryl and I could share with you our best kept secrets to being an unforgettable podcast guest. And that starts with telling a compelling story. And I just filmed uh, my interview with Daniel Geffen actually this week. And so that, that interview is set to be a free bonus for Cheryl and I's featured and fabulous uh, podcast course. And Daniel was telling just how important it is to tell your story in a compelling way and how he really helps people that want to share their stories on podcasts, like dig really deep to the reasons why behind what you do, you know, behind what it is that you do. And he's found some amazing, compelling stories, everything from someone might have been homeless in their past to someone had a childhood illness to someone that had suffered abandonment and how we see it rise up in us and become that thing that is our mission later in life. So it's extremely important to share a compelling story. It also gives you the opportunity to share what makes you unique. So if you want to, it's, it's also very, even though there's a half a million in podcasts that are active right now, it's very competitive to get on a show. And so the more that you know how to share what is unique about yourself, the more attractive you're going to be to that host. And then what I think is most important is how to give those valuable takeaways. So our secret number one is telling a compelling story. So Cheryl, you want to take it away and talk about how to tell a compelling story? Yeah, sure thing. So as you can see on the slide, you want to use a hook and you also want to keep your momentum. Now, there are many, many elements to a compelling story. You know, you've probably heard of a lot of fiction stories that contain drama and suspense and all of that. That's not exactly what we're talking about. That one of the major things people want to see in a compelling story is they want to see transformation. So they want to see, I was here and now I'm here, and they want to hear about how you got there. So if you are telling the story, like Mary said, of going through a serious illness or, or an accident that really changed the way you live your life, either for the better or for the worse, or you go through some kind of life circumstance that le leaves you here, people want to know, well, you're here today, how did you get there? And they want to hear that without any of the BS. They want to hear how did you do that and what were your steps and how can I replicate that? because most of the people that are listening to it will be potentially in the place that you were then. So they want to hear, how did you get out of that hole, if you will, and lead you to where you are now? So people really want to see that element of transpiration, uh, uh, transformation, and they also want to be inspired by it too. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. And I think that it's really, really important that your story contains a hook. You know, it contains that thing that when people hear it, that makes them want to know more. So mm -hmm. it really keeps that momentum going throughout the storytelling process. So your hook is what is really getting people's attention. And actually the more off the wall or mysterious it is, the better. So for my own my own story, it's after living a life full of tragedy and devastation, and I often go into details about some what some of that was, I discovered I had an immense well of resilience, as well as um, even recently being featured in a documentary that is all about resilience called the Global Resilience Process. And 
I know that with Eat, Pray, Love with Elizabeth Gilbert, which we all know and love that movie, and it's one of my favorite movies, that after a painful divorce, this author sets out to devote one year to pleasure, prayer, and love. And um, Apple Computers, like the one of their taglines, which I find very interesting, is because the people who are crazy enough to think they can change the world are the ones that do. So that's just some examples of some hooks. Um, Cheryl, do you have any examples to add? You know what I want to add? It's not so much an example. It's it's the concept of what we're thinking about here, which is basically think about your, the hook of your story as a headline. It needs to be something that grabs people in. And just as if you're reading an article that popped up in your newsfeed on Facebook or Twitter or LinkedIn or wherever, you click on it because it's interesting to you and it has that surprise factor and that intrigue. So if you look at all of the examples that Mary has here, they all have that those elements. You look at it and you want to know more. So you want to know more about what was the tragedy and devastation? What was that? I want to hear about what that entailed. And how did you discover that you had resilience? Again, it's that question of how. So you've given them the what, and now they want to know the how. So it makes it clickable or within the context of podcasts, it makes you want to download that episode and listen to it. You know, it's so true. I was on an interview. I was on an interview yesterday and when the guy, it was uh, Robert Kendall's interview uh, podcast, it's called Tough Love and it's a great show and I was really honored to be on the show. So he was asking me about some of my earlier tragedies in life. In particular, um, he was really interested in that I had been out on my own at 16, had a child and then had started my first business at 24. And he asked me that very same question. He wanted to know how I had picked myself up. You know, what were the reasons behind that? And what I found very interesting is you know, it requires me to dig deep in order to get that answer. So the more that you're willing to dig deep and share those answers, the more valuable you're going to be for the audience, because I'm sure there's somebody in that audience that can relate to that type of story. And I remember what I told him yesterday was that honestly, when I was in my early twenties, I had no idea. It wasn't like I was strategizing in my mind, how am I going to get over this? But it wasn't until decades later, two decades later, that I could look back and say, here's what it was. So mm-hmm. it's one of those things that sometimes you're not even aware of it during, you know, during the event or during the encounter or during the experience that you're having, but it's only years later when you can go back and reflect and say, yes, this thing that I did helped compel me to move forward. This thing that I did gave me that momentum. Um, another part that I was thinking about that is, you know, all about just being open and vulnerable and and willing to share because sometimes it's the things we hide the most that are the most, that are what is intriguing to the other person or to the audience. So your story is a journey that you're taking your listeners on. It should have a clear sense of direction. So we, this is all about getting, honing your skills on when you're telling that story. So don't just, and actually, um, Cheryl, I'm going to let you take this one away too, because I know that you are a fabulous writer and you understand things about the difference between stating facts and actually describing the scene, you know, using what you saw, what you smelled, what you heard paint a picture for the audience. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? Yeah, I'd love to. Thank you for that amazing introduction to this section. Um, So when you are describing an event, you really want to bring someone into the scene. So if you're talking about a breakthrough moment where you were driving in your car, and as you often do when you're driving because your brain goes into a slightly different state, you start to get downloads and ideas when you're driving. Instead of saying, I was driving in my car and I had a moment of clarity. I mean, that sounds, when I said moment of clarity, my light just came on. (laughs) It's a little bit spooky. Anyways, you're saying when I was driving, I had a moment of clarity. Okay, great. That states what happened as a fact, but it's not very interesting. It's not very, dare I say, sexy. So what you want to do is start including, as it says on the the slide, start including emotions and descriptions and the five senses. What could you hear and and see and, and smell, touch, taste, whatever is appropriate to whatever it was you were doing. So instead of saying I was driving in my car and I had a moment of clarity, say I was driving in my car and the rain was lashing against the windshield or I was 
driving in my broken 1986 Volvo and the air conditioning's broken and I had sweat rolling down my cheek in the, the heat of the Texas summer or whatever it might be. Can you see that with that example, you're really pulling someone into the scene and they can, they can start to sense what you were going through because you're describing it in, in a richer detail. So that's really what it is about. It's putting the, the listeners in the scene by including those emotions, what you were feeling and what you were seeing, hearing and experiencing around you. It's so true. Yeah. And Cheryl, those are the kind of details that I think make the story so much richer. Like mm. I was thinking, as you were saying that driving, driving in the darkness of the night with that was lit up by the full moon or something that exactly. you know, that's more for probably something to be written. Cause if you're telling a story, you know, oh, I was driving and it was this unbelievable rain lashing on my windows and I could barely see five feet in front of me, but through that, but then I had this moment of clarity. So yes. it's even an interesting contrast between how hard it is to see in the rain when you're driving versus having that moment of clarity. Beautiful. I think that one of the things is choosing which stories to tell because we have so many stories. So we want to make sure that we're telling stories that are relevant to the, the show that we might be on relative to our product or service or book that we have coming out, but making the topic very relative to what you want to speak about. Um, so you could think about things like, what is it that you want to establish yourself as an expert about? And are your topics in alignment with your brand and goals? And are they in alignment with the particular show that you're on. So for example, um, I go on shows that are both personal development and business. And so whenever I go on a business show, I will all often talk about how I created my words that work system, why I created it, what were my aha moments, what were the changes. I talk often about how much revenue increase that I had. And then when I'm on a show that's all about personal development, I'm going to share much more personal. You know, I'm going to talk about my divorce. I'm going to talk about my son who's on the autism spectrum. And I'm sharing much more things that are directly related out of my personal life. And um, so, by the way, I've been on over 200 shows now. And so in the beginning, I, I was not as good at it as... Um, <laughs> as I, I believe that I'm an, on now. So also, I wanna say that the more you share different stories that you actually can use that later on to make other content that you need. So one of the other courses that Cheryl and I uh, teach is a content creation course. And this is a really going on podcast is a really incredible and easy way to develop other content other content. And so what I like to do is create a list of different topics. And oftentimes, whenever I get off of a show, I'll, if I talked about something new or something different that I don't typically talk about, I write that down and I put that in my story file. So it just makes it really easy to keep an ongoing list of stories that I can write about or use on a podcast. It's really important to think about defining moments in your life. You know, what was the moment when you felt empowered? What was the moment when you got over something? So one of the th stories that I started telling that I hadn't been telling before was after my divorce and I was feeling very, very broken for about two years, there came a time where a woman who owned another company like mine invited me to a meeting at her office. And she shared with me that she had also gone through a divorce and that she lost her business in the midst of the divorce. And then all of a sudden I had this inner confidence because I looked up to her so much that I realized that, wow, if she lost her business through her divorce, then she also hit rock bottom, mm -hmm. that maybe it wasn't so bad or unusual that I was hitting rock bottom. And then as a matter of fact, it gave me something to be really proud of because I actually didn't lose my business. And from that moment on, there was this turnaround, whereas my business um, was really suffering. And then all of a sudden, my business was thriving again. A lot of times, you might struggle with finding what your personal stories are. So Cheryl, do you have any 
Do you have any um, advice to help people figure out what their stories might be? Yeah, it's, it's as you were saying, it's those defining moments. So it's, it's having that self-awareness to, and that, that self-honesty really, to look back and say, okay, what was the moment where something or someone changed my mind? I have an example from one of my clients, actually. Her husband was working in the finance district in, in London, in England. They were a very successful middle-class family, you know, nice house, nice car, the whole bit. And he was going through a lot of stress and she came home from the school run one day and he was gone. He, he had ended his life and she described, she shared her story and she's writing a book and she's been published in the Good Men Project and Elephant Journal through, through our work together. And she shares the story of how she was driving home thinking, I have the laundry to do and I've got to get groceries and she's thinking about doing the laundry and she comes home and her husband's gone, he's dead, He's it's happened, right? And what is so heart-wrenching about that story is it shows how real that is. There's been, I'm not sure if you're aware, Mary, but there's been a huge campaign in England at the moment about mental health in men and this epidemic of men not seeking help until it's, it's too late and they feel they have no way out. So what she's really done with describing that story is made it real for people. She's thinking about the groceries and the school run and laundry. This is not some dramatic thing you see on TV. This is something that's happening to real people. So even though that is a very, very intense thing to happen to someone, the way that she talks about it and describes that experience in her life is to really normalize it. That's a, an experience when someone's life has ended through whatever means where you could make it very dramatic and embellish. But what she's done is make it so real for people that you can't help but be affected on a deep emotional level when you read her work or hear her talking about it because she makes it so real. So, you know, as we say here, keep it really real, avoid those embellishments, uh, bring in those details of, of your life. Uh, we gave the, the driving in a car example before, my client coming home, taking care of the kids and finds that her life has changed in, in an instant. So bring that into telling the story to make people understand that this can this can happen to anyone and that it's not not a big dramatic thing so that is i know a little off from what we're, we're talking about but in terms of finding your story find those pockets find those moments and then describe it in a way that makes it real and relatable for people so even if they haven't been through something like losing a partner to mental health issues they can really relate to your life changing in an instant when you least expect it we've all had that happen so make it real for people and include those details cheryl i think that was brilliant thank you so very much i'm really blessed to have the most incredible clients this woman is a a force she's amazing so we were just um we were just in Cheryl's story, I think really demonstrates everything right here to mm -hmm. be vulnerable and brave. You know, it's a, it's a vulnerable thing to reach inside of yourself and share a story that is so heartbreaking. And I know that through my own divorce, you know, just feeling like my heart was shattered into a million pieces of glass and laying all out on the floor. The last thing I ever wanted to do was have someone else be aware of what I was going through. So it's such a brave thing to share your stories, share your failures, share, share your heartache and the way that you truly feel about it. I think that we're moving into a time where authenticity is so very important and it's a brave thing. Authenticity is a brave choice. And we're not necessarily saying you would share these stories right in the midst of when you're going through them because oftentimes by, it's, it's when you've come out on the other side and you're writing about it or you're healing from it and you've gone through that part of the journey because so many of our journeys through life are are not comfortable it's nothing said this life was supposed to be a great a graceful one so after you've shared some of after you've come up with the story that you're willing to share it's a good idea to get yourself organized with some bullet points because that will help keep you on track during the interview so there is another thing that I think it's really important to talk about, which is saying what makes you unique? Why are you different 
than everybody else. And so, and, and understand, I know from Daniel, he said that the amount of people that are pitching his podcast has just, it's really skyrocketed lately. So what you want to do is you want to be someone that's very unique. And I had, I struggled with knowing what was unique about me in the beginning. Daniel was explaining it like, when you live your story, you don't see it as a unique or particularly interesting thing. But it's like when you tell someone else your story, you can even ask them, like, what do you think was interesting about this? So, you know, is it, is it um, that I'm a personal development author? No, there's lots of personal development authors. There's lots of CEOs out there. And I think that the important thing is really to go deeper, like that I'm a mom of a child on the spectrum, talking about how my divorce affected everything in my life and also being out on my own at 16. So it's the combination of all of those things that make me a unique person because it's all of those things that have developed your character. Anything to add on that, Cheryl? Yeah, it's, I really want to express how tough it can be to be removed enough from your story that you can see what's unique about it. Sometimes it might be hiring, you know, someone like myself or someone that works in that area of, of public relations or storytelling or taking one of our courses so that you can have that slightly removed perspective and understand that this is absolutely incredible what you've been through and it is different. If you're not doing that, then one thing you can ask yourself is what is the one thing that people always ask me or always say about me? For me, I know that Mary started her own business when she was 24. When I was 24, I emigrated to Canada and people always say, oh, what, on your own? Did you have a husband? Did you have family that came with you? Did you have a family in Canada? Did you know anyone there? And I'll say, no, I just, I just did it. And people will find that extraordinary. And to me, I, it's so... Well, that's what I did and I chose it. It's not extraordinary to me, but it's quite surprising to other people. So when you're asked the same question repeatedly or you get the same reaction repeatedly and it's quite a surprised or extremely positive or extremely confused or some kind of polarizing reaction, then that is an element that is unique about you. So use that. I completely, completely agree. I just want to check and see where we're at here. So <laughs> yeah, I remember going through this and it took some serious soul searching. So I definitely agree about perhaps hiring a coach that can help you with this, you know, figuring out what is the silver bullet? What is the thing that hooks people in about you? And you won't have to, you won't have to concentrate on that too much during the interview. That is all about what's in your bio and how you pitch yourself to the podcast host. Mm -hmm. You know, I think that it's, I think that it's worth stating that a lot of people think they have to suffer a tragedy to make themselves unique. And um, I remember when I was very first starting out with writing, I was very worried that um, I didn't have a hook because I'd never been a drug addict or an alcoholic. And if I felt like at the time that so many people had that were that were had large audiences and that had best selling books had overcome some sort of addiction, um, whether that be alcohol, whether it be sex addiction, addiction, whether it be heroin. And I thought to myself, what am I gonna do? I don't have. I was never an addict. Have you ever had that thought, Cheryl? <laughs> it's so funny. I'm actually five years clean and sober, so I'm a former, former addict myself. But I don't. I don't use that in the story because I feel like it's not. It's not exceptional because so many people in our space are sober. So interestingly enough, I could use that one, but I don't because it's, it no longer feels exceptional. Um, but I know what you're saying. Like when we've, we've lived through it, we don't think it's exceptional. And it's so amazing to me that you would ever think that you look at what you've been through and think it's perhaps not, not enough to, to share. But what, what we struggle with the most to overcome is what we need to teach. And that becomes our story. Well, and I think that your example was perfect because, you know, you said the thing that people ask you about the most is, 
you know, making, making a, a huge life decision at 24 and immigrating at 24. And so there's no strat, there's no tragedy steeped in that. It's, it's very right. courageous. So I think that your example was perfect because you're sharing with people um, something that isn't a tragedy. So I really just wanted to make the point that you are not ruled out if you have not lived through this, you know, tremendous hero's journey in your life. Yeah, it's not a contest to see who's had the worst childhood. <laughs> <laughs> it does it can feel like that um so i think i've got on here so maybe you started a cheerleading camp or you're a sci-fi sci-fi addict and or maybe you've attended over a hundred con conventions i remember one time i heard a woman on a podcast and what was unique about her was she had been to some sort of personal development uh event and i don't want to say who it was connected to because i've never seen this to be true about him but she said that during this event she actually had to learn how to swallow glass <laughs> i mean there's so many things happening that that are you know unique and and sort of out there and and crazy i always get I, i'll tell you i'll tell you one of the things i always get hooked in by people who've had any kind of near-death experience oh. i don't know why but i just find yeah. like anita morjani i just find those types of things interesting so let's see what is important is that you connect with your uniqueness with a lot of emotion behind that so mm -hmm. whether it's about being driven and passionate that's the thing it's that connection it's that it's those strong emotions that build a bridge between you and the listeners so you find that and the hard part is done so cheryl should we talk about um giving valuable takeaways yeah you are incredibly quotable so if we're talking about takeaways in terms of quoting you and pearls of wisdom then you are absolutely exceptional at this really <laughs> oh yeah you're so i listen to you and it's like quote after quote after quote it's i'm like if i was live tweeting one of your podcasts i would be i'd have very soft thumbs that's really sweet of you to say okay. so you know it's more when we want to be a great podcast guest because let's face it there's it's easy to get on a podcast, but once you're on there, you you want to tell your story and the story should have a point. So mm -hmm. right at the beginning of today's broadcast, I was talking about my story of wanting to be a writer for 10 years, but having that belief system that said that I wasn't a writer. And so the point of that story is that you need to invest in yourself. Mm. You know, so that's like a, a one minute story that has a beginning. It has, you know, it says what the issue is, and then it ends with saying, what is the point or the solution? So what is it that you can provide? Um, hosts absolutely are not looking for just another life coach. They're trying to create their own true fans, because if you're a host of a show, the thing that you want most is to bring value to your audience. And so you want to have guests that are have a great story but also it's all about that impact that you make in the world so mm -hmm. your point is is really tied into what is the impact that you make in the world and i know so many wonderful wonderful people who are who are doing things like um helping addicts, um, helping in some sort of healing capacity, or maybe they've just started a non-for-profit. You know, what is that impact that you're trying to make? Because if you are out there trying to make an impact in the world, then you have something to share. You have something to teach. Mm -hmm. All right. So let's talk about how we can make this impact. Starting with the takeaways. So a takeaway is a concept, a concept, a statement, or a soundbite. So just like, just like Cheryl alluded to before, it's something you could easily tweet. So a few of mine are always knowing your outcome, cleanser clog, and I know another one I've been saying recently is who you are as a person is more powerful than anything holding you back. I love that one. Yeah. So it's like, and I, and I talk about that as saying all of these tragedies that had happened to me, it's like, how was I able to achieve so much? And so the takeaway from that is because 
who I was inside, the amount of empowerment that I had inside of me, the amount of knowledge, the amount of wisdom, the amount of know-how was more powerful than any of the problems I was experiencing. And if I could just learn to focus more on what my assets were than what my tragedies were, I knew I would always be okay. So you also want these, these takeaways to be simple because you know, the best compliment I think you can get is if somebody hears you on a podcast and then they're able to really understand inside, outside, backwards and forwards, what you're talking about to such a degree that they could go out and try it right now. What do you think, Cheryl? Yeah, you know what it reminds me of, and I know I've said this a couple of times before when we're, we're just talking or when we've been doing our courses, but the, the takeaway piece for me sounds, um, it reminds me a lot of Jerry's final thoughts from Jerry Springer, the chat show from years ago, only, you know, with slightly less chaos. At the end of this, you know, scene of chaos on his TV show, at the end, there would be this really calm moment where he would stand in this booth or whatever it might be saying what he, what everyone should take away from it and it always end the same, take care of yourselves and each other. But there would be this little sound bite of maybe 30 seconds where he would give people something to chew on, some pearl of wisdom that they could take away with them. So it's really like that. It's really like Jerry's final thoughts. It's a little summary of what people can take away. Sometimes it's a call to action, something that people can actually put into place, like we've said here with the actionable steps. But it's something they can take away it's like tying a ribbon around the story you've uh, explained where you were and where you are and how you got there and then you're you're giving a, a a nice little um icing on top if you will of if i if i could overcome this then i knew i could overcome anything and i went on to do this so it's it's a final thought that people can really package up your story nicely and know that it's it's complete that's a perfect explanation thank you so much you. so so far what we've talked about is telling a compelling story, sharing your unique value proposition and giving those value, giving those um, valuable things that are going to be the key takeaways mm -hmm. from the show. So I just want to talk about that. Nothing I've shared with you today is just theories. So these are the, these are the tools that I've used to book myself on over 150 podcasts last year. And now I've been on 50 more. So I'm up to 200. I've been able to get featured on big name shows like EO Fire and Chicken Soup for the Soul. And this has also, what this has brought me is so many other opportunities because people have heard me on a podcast and then what they've done is invited me to be on a part as a part of their online summits. So if you ever see those free interview series um, going around, I think I've been on 20 or 30 of those now. And it's all because typically because someone found me on a podcast. Also, I have been invited to travel and I've been invited to, um, let's see, there's an event in Florida that I'm going to be speaking at in October. And there are another event in Chicago in October and another event in Toronto. So basically don't call me in October because um, I'm already fully booked for that month. <laughs> So I think that this is really, really great. And the thing that Cheryl and I are here to teach you is how to get yourself booked on a podcast. And for me, I'm a very pragmatic person. So I want to create a system that is replicatable and that works. I really want to encourage you to start booking podcasts right away. And quite honestly, the perfect time to start booking it, it was actually right now. You know, I think a lot of people think that they should wait while they're, while they're doing that, but it's, um, there's no reason to wait. And actually what I wanted to do, and I might need to get, uh, Roxanne's help because I, oh, I think I found the button. I want to actually show you just from a point of results, if I can figure out how to get to, um, Google. Oh, here it is. So I'm just going to show you so you can get an idea of what I'm talking about. So if I just Google Mary Shore's podcasts, what you're going to see, I think I don't like this message coming up right here. What you're going to see is all of these podcasts that I've been on. And it's just, look at this one show after another, after another. 
And it's just page after page of people find that people can find me on these shows. So I find, go ahead, Cheryl. It'd be really interesting to see what, how, cause I'm a bit of an SEO nerd, search engine optimization. It'd be really interesting to see if you just put your name into Google, how many of the search results would be podcasts. Let's so, try it. That'd be really interesting too. So it's more than likely improved your, the way you rank in search engines too. Let's check that out. Just a, a moment of curiosity. Okay. Do you have to, I'm not an expert on SEO at all. So let's see. Okay. I see my something see, about but, being an author, Twitter, website, Twitter, my website, LinkedIn, your book. Here's a, this is a radio show I was on. Interesting. So it's not the top thing that comes up, but I think that's good because the top things that are coming up is more about me. So here we go right here. Here's an episode of a podcast and here's an episode, episode uh, 225, Untame the Wild Soul. That was a really amazing podcast right here. Mary Shores, how to communicate or how to crack the communication code. That was my episode on EO Fire. So it looks like when we get to page number two, it's all these shows are starting to come up. Any thoughts on that? It is, yeah. So even though it, it's not until page two, that the podcast I mentioned under your, under your name, the way that search engines work is they work on the ever elusive algorithm that I'm sure you've heard so much about. And what they do is they have something called spiders, just like the insect. And a spider is effectively a bot that scans all of the information, crawls all of the information. That's why it's called a spider. It crawls all the information on online and it, it ranks it. So even though you haven't, on the first page of Google, the podcast not listed, the podcast content that mentions your name along with conscious communications is the reason you will rank so well in Google. I'm sure there are other Mary Shaws in the world. Now, when you Google Mary Shaws, it's only you. And the same applies to myself. If you put my name into Google, it's only me that comes up on the first page of Google pretty much. And it's because the information that's associated with our names, for example, I used to write for the Huffington Post, Mary, the amount of podcasts you've done, Google goes ding, ding, ding. This is really credible content. And it racks you up over somebody else that might be called Mary Shaws or Cheryl Muir. So that will have improved the way that you rank on Google. Very good. So you think my Google ranking there is okay? It's, it's all you. If there was another Mary Shaws that was, I don't know, an apple farmer in Illinois or something, um, but you know, it's, it's all you. So that's good. It's a good thing. I'm, I'm, um, I'm actually impressed you got that right. There's an apple orchard right around the corner from my house. Is that, I say that because there's a Cheryl Muir who's an apple farmer in Canada. Awesome. <laughs> yeah, it's called Curtis, Curtis Orchard and they have um, apples. They have the best apple pie you could ever get. So, so okay, go. let's talk about having a system to booking your podcast. Cause once, and you know, I teach you how to be a great guest, but in order to be a guest, you have to book yourself on a show. So it's really about having having a system that can get you there, having a process. So one of the first things that you want to do, I'm giving you guys a homework assignment. The first thing I want you to do is just create a list of podcasts that you want to be featured on. So you could do this a couple of different ways. And um, I thought a great way I could show you this is just to, I want to go back to Google again. Okay. So let's say you are a knitter. So let's just, this is how you create this list. Podcasts about knitting. <laughs> <laughs> so here are the first, everything. there's a podcast with a, believe me, with a half a million shows, there is literally a podcast for everything. Now when I'm doing this, this is, this is, um, the ones I look for. So see how here this third entry says knitting podcast, nine popular shows you don't want to miss. So I know if I look at this particular article, it's going to give me a list of shows, knitting pipeline, the knit more girls. Isn't that cute? <laughs> the yarn addicts, yarniacs, yarniacs. That's the way you pronounce that. Never not knitting the savvy girls, 
the anatomy of knitting. So here right away, I would check these particular shows to find out if they were a fit. Now, what would make them a fit would be whether or not um, they do guests because some podcasts, mm -hmm. they, it's just themselves talking or like a, they have a co-host and they're just talking with that particular co-host. So I like to find shows that go on my list that they have at least 50 episodes um, you know, there's so many new shows starting though, that I'll be very honest and say that I've loosened my grip on that. And as long as, you know, I even went, one of my favorite shows that I've recently been on was called Business Break with SD Rand. And I liked our episode so much that I took a clip of it and I put it in a presentation that I was doing. And, um, I was actually only her eighth guest. So I'm open to, I'm open to newer shows, especially because there are so many right now, but in general, I like it if I can get on, if they've had more than 50 episodes, because I know that they're going to have a larger audience. Um, if you have another influencer in your space, it can be a really great idea to do that Google search. So for example, if you do similar work, if you are, if you're do, if you're a personal development author, you could, um, create a list of all the shows I've been on. You know, you're going to, you'd come up with 200 shows and then you could pitch all of those same shows. So I've done that with other influencers like, um, Christine Hassler. I've just found people that I felt like were similar to me and search them. So like Mary Shore's podcast or Christine Hassler podcast, Gabby Bernstein podcast, and tried to find the shows that they have been on. That was really, really helpful to me. Um, you want to check that they've published a show in the last month because you, you could find shows that are old, you know, and you reach out to them and you find out that they are no longer publishing their shows. And again, you want to make sure that they do have, have featured guests. So another way you could do this, if you didn't want to use a Google search is you can go directly to the networks. So I've listed a few for you here, like blog talk radio, transformation talk radio, voice America. And one that's a little bit smaller, but I really, really love is dream visions seven radio network. And what's great about dream visions is if you if you can get in their network, they'll put you on a whole bunch of shows at once. I've noticed the same thing with blog talk and some of these others, like once you're in, they want you to go on a lot of their shows. Mm -hmm. So uh, that was especially mostly true with dream visions. There's also law of attraction radio network. Um, that's a really good one as well as iHeartRadio. radio. So you can check out specific, um, networks. Uh Oh, what did I do? I think it was the end of the slides and it closed the screen share. <laughs> what I was going to say as well is if you have gone to the extent of writing a book proposal and if, if you want to know how to do that, Mary and I have a course called the Aspiring Authors Workshop that takes you through step by step how to do that and how to build a platform which publishers are, are looking for because at the end of the day they want to make sure you can, you can shift copies of books and sell books. Um, but if you have written a book proposal, then you'll have your comparative, or as it's called in the States, competitive analysis of titles that are similar to yours. So what you can do, as Mary said, is find similar influences, but you can use the competitive analysis in your book proposal to find those influences because their book is similar to the one that you're writing. So if you're promoting a book, that's the way to, to hack your way into that. Yeah. So your challenge for today is try to write a list of shows that you could potentially pitch. And then Cheryl and I, we have a course called Featured and Fabulous, your five phase formula to booking yourself on a podcast. And if you're interested in that course, we are currently selling it for $137. We are not going to be selling it at that price much longer. So if you're interested in all, get in it now, because uh, that is definitely an introductory price for our courses. Um, what we're, we're, we're going to be combining our courses all into one and it's going to be a significantly different price. So let's talk about these five phases just for a moment. So we've got what you're going to learn with this course is how to create this list. You're also going to learn how to create a, your interview topics. So that's the, the second part of the phase. The third thing that you're going to learn all about is creating your media one sheet. Cheryl, do you want to talk about that for a moment? Yeah, so a media one sheet or a media kit is basically a 
visual and text-based representation of who you are and why you matter. So it'll say who you are, what you do, it'll be the, the whole 5W thing, who, what, when, where, how, why, all of that. And it will display that in, in a one-pager or a two-pager. It, it's a summary that you can develop in a graphic design program like Canva or, or a, an Adobe program. And then you send it along with your pitch note, your email to the uh, host or the producer of the podcast you're pitching. And you attach it as a PDF. And it shows them in a very visual way uh, why you're important. And Mary, I know your, your first um, one sheet, you know, it's, it's developed over time and it's, it's changed. But you have some really um, critical elements on there of here's the things you can interview me about here's here's my bio and you include all those elements we we go through much more about that in the course of how to um how to create that but if you're not including that then it does really show that you are sort of new to the game and, and it makes you stand out for the wrong reasons Yes, and you'll also get a free a bonus interview with Daniel Geffen, and he's going to talk a lot about that Media One sheet. And so if you're already taking that course, we'll be getting that uh, new interview out to you shortly. Also, you, we're going to give you a template of how we're going to actually give you a template so that you can just cut and paste your own stuff into the Media One sheet. And like Cheryl recommends using Canva, Cheryl's, uh, Cheryl's One Sheet is really beautiful. And she's right. When I first started out, my media kit was nine pages long. And so it wasn't until I really got that uh, down to one page because nine pages of stuff on a media sheet was was just too confusing for people to follow. So you're, you're getting all of the exact information that needs to go on this media she sheet. And then right after that, we're following that up with teaching you how to write your pitch note. So mm -hmm. Cheryl also is teaching that part. It's all about to say when you are now pitching that show, so you've already made your list, you've already come up with your stories and your interview questions. Then the next thing is you've created that media one sheet. The next thing you're going to do is you're going to um, send emails to all of these shows on your list. Uh, one of our students just posted, I think yesterday, her stats where mm -hmm. I think she's, um, she just started within a few weeks, maybe six weeks ago, and she's already been on 20 shows, I want to say. So she's rocking and rolling and she's continually pitching people, which is helping her get the job done. So, but what you need in order to make that pitch is to learn how to write the pitch note. Because I think the tendency is to talk all about ourselves. And what we really want to switch this into is making it about the show. How does it resonate with the show in general? And then the, the last part of it is just launching it. And we're going to teach you how to keep track of the shows. We're going to give you a template um, Excel sheet so that you know how to keep track of the shows. We're gonna show you a follow-up formula so you know how to follow up with the shows, as well as I've got, I believe it's an 18 page workbook so that you can, um, along with the course, you'll also have a separate um, 18 page workbook that has all of the details. So it's like your guidebook to pitching yourself on a show. So if you're interested at all, we will have the link posted with this Facebook Live. And you can reach out to either Cheryl and I through the comments or through Facebook Messenger. We'd love to hear from you. And I just wanted to say as well before we wrap up, remember the podcast shows book in advance. So just because you're on a show now doesn't mean it will be out immediately. So Mary was saying before about people thinking they have to wait or they're not ready. And that's the whole other topic for another time. We're never really ready. If we were ready, we would have already done it, right? So we need to start. For example, I was on a podcast on Tuesday and it's going to be out in about mid-July. So it's out in two months time because what hosts do is they record interviews in advance. And so just because you're on a podcast now, it doesn't mean it's out immediately. So that means Means you need to be able to see okay in a couple months I'm going to be doing this and this is important to me and when you start doing podcasts regularly like Mary does you start building up that uh, not back back catalog but future catalog of podcasts that start to come out and generate a uh, promotion for you without you really thinking about it you know Mary I'm sure Mary gets messages all the time saying I just listened to your your interview with such and such and it's something that she recorded you know perhaps a couple of months ago so it's worth bearing in mind too that there's a delay between the interview and the publishing date so the sooner you get started the better actually Cheryl you're exactly right and I and even to demonstrate that so remember when 
remember when I came out to LA and I, we were going to, um, Ruby's event, Amplified yeah. Soul. Okay. So that was, I want to say the first weekend in March, like March 1st and 2nd. Yeah. 2nd yeah, so, and 4th the event was, yeah. Okay. So that's, here's, here's a very good point about that. So if you remember, I was also taping a show. So I went to an in-studio taping of a show called Renegade Radio right, and yeah. it's with Jay Ferrugio. It's an amazing show. It was a huge score for me as far as getting on a show and it must have just aired yesterday. Okay. So March, March to May. And yeah. here okay. is, um, I can show you, I got, I just got this message, but it yeah. says, Hey Mary, I loved your podcast. You did with Renegade Radio. Your story is inspiring and your message of clear communication is clear and precise. Thank you. I'm currently a fourth year dental student at Roseman University graduating next spring. I've been studying on my own time about case acceptance of patients who need work done. Well, anyway, I won't read you the whole message, but the point is at the end, he's asking me he wants to know more about the work I do. And so this is, this is a great way to show how this can bring potential business opportunities to you. So almost every show I go on, I get one other opportunity out of it, sometimes as many as three or four, depending on the size of the show. So like, for example, um, EO Fire, I think is known to have, I mean, even as much as 100,000 downloads per show, I got lots and lots of messages after being on that show. So, all right, well, let us know if you have any questions. I believe Cheryl and I might do um, one or more Facebook Lives coming up. And today I just wanted to practice this. Thank you all for hanging in there with me. I wanted to practice sharing the slides on a Facebook Live. I've never done that before. So I didn't, I didn't, um, I didn't do a too terrible job. I just had to figure out which way to turn the slides. So, all right, goodbye everyone. Bye for now. Hey, this is Mary. Thanks so much for watching. Check out a free chapter of my book, Conscious Communications at maryshores.com forward slash free chapter. The link is in the description below.